Hi, in this tutorial we'll take a look at creating your first project. We'll create a new project, add a character for the player to control, add an enemy and choose some AI to bring the enemy to life. We'll then test our game. So, we're starting at the main menu. Click on Create and then New Project. We now have our new project window. We can choose a name for this project, I'll call it Sample 1. We can also choose whether it is a 2D or 3D project. We'll make a 3D game and so we'll leave this checkbox cleared. The Shoot'em Up kit supports all major PC joysticks including the Xbox 360 controller but not everyone has a joypad and so we can select which keys or mouse actions relate to which joypad action. Here we can see that the cursor keys relate to moving the left analogue stick on a joypad. These defaults are suitable for most projects and so we can just click Done. We're now at the project menu and from here we can access all the different editors or adjust the project settings. We will just be using the level editor and so we can click here. The level editor starts with two windows. The tools window contains buttons for placing items on the map. We could choose to place scenery items, lights, sounds and many other types of items. We can then choose to adjust the level settings such as music or the type of background or list and select items we have already placed on the map. We can also choose whether to display a grid for alignment purposes and what size that grid should be. The other window allows us to create or modify the definitions for players, non-player characters usually referred to as NPCs, weapons or bullets. Definitions allow properties such as health, maximum speed or the style of movement to be defined and stored so that they can be used by many objects or across different projects. We will just be using the default definitions for this first project and so won't be using this window. Now that we have had a quick look around, let's place our first object, the player. We do this by clicking on the player button and then selecting the object we wish to use as the player. We can either double click or press the OK button to select the item. The object will now follow the mouse until we click to place the item. The properties window is now displayed allowing us to modify its name or tweak any of its values. The player and weapon definitions both refer to the definition properties we looked at earlier when we spoke about these buttons. We will stay with the default defini definitions. Players and NPCs belong to teams. They are used by the AI to determine who the enemy is. Any player or NPC who belongs to a different team is seen as being an enemy. There is also a neutral team which gets along with everybody. Tags are markers which identify points of interest. If we click on the Tags tab, then we can see the tags which were available for this model, or we could create a new one. As we can see, there are three tags, two different guns and one called Thrust 1. If we go back to the General pane, then we can set the weapon to fire from Gun 1 tag. Next, we'll add an NPC. We'll do this in much the same way as for the player. Click the NPC button and select the object we wish to use as the NPC's character. We can then place this character by clicking on the map. The NPC is automatically aligned to face the player's character. The property pane is very similar to that of the player. There are just a few additional items. The active area describes the area where the NPC is allowed to be. We don't need to confine our NPC to an area and so we can just leave this as none. The AI type allows us to choose from a selection of artificial intelligence behaviours. Each behaviour in the list is quite simple, performing just one task, such as chasing or rotating. However, they can be combined to provide quite sophisticated results. The default AI types are fire and chase. We will keep these but change some of the values for the fire AI type. The enemy only has one weapon and so we don't need to change the weapon number. We can modify the frequency of firing to make it a little more random. Changing the maximum to 2.5 seconds will cause the NPC to fire at any time between 1 and 2.5 and seconds after their last shot. We can set the minimum and maximum angles or the proximity which the NPC must be from the player before it is allowed to fire. 
This can be useful for preventing the NPC from making shots which are wildly off target or won't reach their enemy. However, we will just leave these values and allow the NPC to fire regardless of distance or angle. The last value states whether the NPC is enabled in game or not. We could add some NPCs which are only enabled when a trigger has been reached or a timer runs out. This is covered in other tutorials. We now have a player and an NPC, so we are ready to test the game. Click on the test game button and the game begins. We have not created a front end or edited the HUD and so we are dropped straight into the game and the default HUD showing score and lives is displayed. But we can see the NPC moving around and firing at us. Bullets, by default, are set to collide with each other. This can be easily changed by modifying the bullet definition or creating a new one. We have seen how easy it is to create a new project and add player and NPC characters to the scene to make a simple game. We could easily enhance the game by using copy and paste to create more enemies or create new ones with different models and AI behaviours. There are many more features to explore, so please check out the other tutorials or the user guide. Thanks for watching.